In this video, it's a 1996 Nissan Maxima QX. So here we have the Nissan Maxima um, QX as it was sold in the UK. I'm not sure I actually used the QX um, badge here. Um, I, I've tried to look into the history of the Nissan Maxima and uh, it's generally completely confusing. Uh, the Nissan Maxima tag started being used in the early 80s and um, for um, posh Nissans sold in America and uh, was later applied to posh cars sold in Japan and eventually with the third generation Maxima in the UK. Uh, this is the fourth generation but it's not actually a Maxima. Um, it is in fact a Sephiro C-E-F-I-R-O, uh, that's what the um, Japanese market models were called, but um, of the A32 type, I think. Just to confuse matters even more, there was an A32 Maxima, which was sold in America, which I think used the same body shell, was probably built in America, and um, yeah, just had a different front end treatment. This car, uh, um, I think it's a Japanese import, um, or was it sold here new? Let's zoom in and we can see. No, it was sold here new. It is a Kiwi car, sedan, three litre engine, we'll get to that. So this is a Kiwi example, which is why it hasn't got the um, Sephiro badge on it. Pay attention to yourself, Seabrook, come on. Um, yeah, so it's been here from new, which you can kind of tell from the number plate, UT is around the 1996 time and yeah this is the second shape of Maxima we got in the UK um, it was widely panned for being so very very bland and it has to be said um, it's not an inspiring car to look at is it it's uh, a little unexciting I personally think that the most um, entertaining aspect um, just note the um, curb search lights going on we'll see if we can get those to illuminate uh, i think the rear is the best aspect of this car i think the color is also superb on this one uh, we didn't get many interesting colors in the uk they were almost always silver or a bland gray but i think that aspect is quite pleasing yes it certainly has a, a hint of just being a big nissan primera and that's perhaps not the best um, thing to say about a car but you know it's, it's got all the important uh, adornments going on so nice to find one of my stickers the other side of the world here in New Zealand and uh, yeah very popular here um, often owned by um, real estate sorry big truck going past real estate companies as I believe this one was so it's done over 300,000 kilometers and uh, it's it's not perfect uh, a bit of damage going on there it's got headlamp protectors which have a few scars of their own so they've actually worked but look at the state of the bonnet it's seen many gravel roads here on um south island uh, the south island sorry um, i believe it's lived on the south island of new zealand all its life um, we should probably have a poke around under the bonnet i think uh, we're just taking these um alloy wheels which i believe were diamond cut when new um, but um, yeah, there you go, all quite jolly. Uh, bonnet release will be on this side because it's a sensible Japanese car. They're at least quite consistent with where they put their um, bonnet releases. And here is the VG V6 engine in 3 litre twin cam 24 valve form with a chain driven um, set of camshafts, which is um, a good idea, I think. Um, one of those engines you definitely don't want to be doing the spark plugs on, I don't think. I can't even see where the spark plugs are. Um, we've got injectors there. Where on earth are the spark plugs? Are they beneath the exhaust manifold? That doesn't seem sensible. Yeah. Yeah, pray you don't have to do the spark plugs because they're in there somewhere but at least you haven't got to do a cam belt which can be very irritating interestingly a lot of the maximas sold in the uk only had the vg20 engine a two liter of about 140 brake horsepower and none of the torque um, so this is a much better bet an entire liter larger you can see it's all very um stock and standard under here it's almost quite clean so um yeah i'm liking that a lot 
clang. Right, if we hop aboard, and I'll leave the door open because it is scorchy Um Yeah, it's a bit of a sea of grey plastic in here and uh, annoying shadows. Uh, but um, yeah, the, the steering wheel is particularly ugly, I think, um, and the dials are entirely uninspiring. But um, I don't think the centre console looks too shabby. We've got some interesting wood sort of stuff going on. A Sony cassette player with a 10 disc uh, CD changer in the boot. Digital climate control. Um, so you just set the temperature and it looks after you. Uh, digital clock, very Japanese. Um, down here we've got um, an overdrive transmission. Um, where's the, oh there's the overdrive button, yeah. Um, Japanese do like their overdrive on an automatic. Um, four speed unit, I believe. Um, little cubby box with a knife in it. Um, so the owner can defend himself. And a uh, glove box. No, oh, it's not too messy in there. System of a down. And tenacious D. Um, that's um, music almost of the right era, I think. System of a down, early 2000s, I think. Um, yeah, so it's it, it's not very inspiring in here. Uh, the uh, UK market probably had a sunroof, um, but um, other parts of the world not obsessed with such leaky devices. You know, it's lumbar support. There are electric seats as well. Don't know if we've got a memory function. It would appear not. And um, buttons all over the place. So you've got to turn the cru cruise control on with that. And then there are steering wheel buttons. No steering wheel buttons for the stereo though. Um, variable intermittent. Uh, right hand stalks of course, they would have been left hand in the UK for the indicators, right hand indicators here for electric windows. But um, yeah, it, it's not inspiring, but um, yeah, that's kind of Nissan's for you. Uh, they thought other things were more important, which we will get to. Now the transverse engine means um, front wheel drive, um, which means there's not that much axle or um, intrusion in the back. And uh, the benefit is plenty of legroom. Um, lots more here than you might expect in a rear wheel drive um, Mercedes or BMW of this era. Um, my feet won't comfortably go under the seat in front though. Um, so there's a limit to how far forward I can get my feet going, which means the under thigh support is not brilliant. Um, there is a little armrest here. Oh yes, there we go. Now, now I'm properly luxuried up. Um, but um, yeah, it's not quite as comfortable as I'd hoped back here, but I suppose with this class of executive car, it wasn't really meant for people loafing around in the back. It was for self-drivers. Uh, just wondering if there is a folding seat. There is. Oh yes, there we go. So we can get into the boot and see an umbrella. Um, that's fairly practical, I guess. If you want your Maxima for stuff other than executive runs. Uh, let's just see what size the boot is. And now we come to um, a key annoyance on cars like this. Um, my um, Ford Fairmont that I'm driving around in is exactly the same. Um, no external boot release. Uh, you can turn the key or you have to come marching up here and I imagine there's a boot release somewhere. Surely there's a boot release. No. We interrupt this presentation to just say, how the hell are you meant to see these here? Tucked away in the back of beyond, down the armrest. Look, it's absolutely invisible from up here. And um, there we go. Ta-da! That's not even slightly practical. And we'll use the key. Up goes the boot lid, there's our 10 CD changer and uh, decent capacity, it's not a very flat boot because it's got a full size spare under there and if we look it's probably the original as well. Um, fresh tyre bobbles, um, lovely condition. Um, jumper cable is always a good thing to have in rural New Zealand, um, more for helping anyone else than yourself you'd hope. Oh I really thought that was going to close then. And notice we've got this sporty little spoiler on the back. So it is quite a wide car, you're quite a long way away. Um, 
turn the temperature up slightly, it makes the fans a, a little bit quieter. Um, it's a bit difficult to see that in um, sunshine, but let's see what the engine sounds like. Very, very smooth. Um, we're going to drive. Uh, I've got the handbrake off just to upset people on the internet. And we're away. It's a very low driving position. Um, a bit like my Fairmont. Um, has anyone ever done a road test between a Nissan Maxima and a Ford Fairmont before? I don't know. I'm just going to take it over this rough bit of ground here. Ah, oh, no problem at all. Yeah, 302,000 kilometers on the um, clock of this example, and away we go. Just turn that off for a minute. This is not full bore, obviously. This is more a demonstration of what the car is like, and all you can hear is road noise. I cannot hear the engine at all. So the gear changes, smooth as they are, do come as a bit of a surprise, just because you can't hear them. Um, otherwise, it would feel like an electric motor. It's um, uncanny. I don't think I've driven anything in this class that feels this refined in terms of engine noise. It's a shame about the, the um, road noise and the wind noise. I'm going to have to put the aircon back on. I'm just melting here. Because um, otherwise, it is um, ridiculously peaceful. And uh, it's it said that this generation wasn't as sporty as earlier examples, but um, it still feels fairly um, biased towards handling rather than ride, I would say. It can be a little crashy at times. Um, I mean, the steering doesn't provide great feel, but you can make decent progress quite easily. And, uh, you know, we're cruising at around 100 kilometers an hour, which is the limit and it frankly feels like it could do this all day and be quite comfortable while it does it. I'm just going to see if I can adjust my seat tilt a bit. No, apparently not. Oh no, there we go. That's altering it a bit. Yeah, again, I'm, I'm struggling for support under my throttle foot. But uh, yeah, this is overall so very 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 pleasant come to a stop here and um, I'll turn the aircon off and we'll see if we can actually hear the engine a bit if we um, give it some um, beanage uh, there isn't a sport mode um, but I suppose I could turn the overdrive off for what what difference it makes just enjoy the last blast of cold there we go overdrive is off Whoa. Six thousand rev change point. That's a hundred K. And we've rather run out of speed limit. Um, but you know, we can pitch in at quite a high speed and it's um, absolutely fine. So I think the overdrive is just locking out top. So if I click that, it should, yeah, there we go changes down and then the torque converter locks up as well. But yeah, I mean, this is really nice, very pleasant, very light car to drive. It's, um, it's not up to BMW or Jaguar standards, but for the people who bought them, that wasn't really important. Um, not everyone wants the sharpest handling. Uh, this is more than adequate for most people. And while the, the styling may be bland and unexciting, does that matter? It probably mattered when these cars were new. Maybe if you'd spent, well, 30 grand or whatever these were new um, on your executive car, you'd feel a bit hard done by if it just looked like a fat Primera. Um, but I think now, now, now these cars are well into sort of hubnut territory in terms of values. They make a lot of sense. Um, I've never driven the 2.0-litre, but having driven my 2.0-litre V6 Rover 45 and having seen reports, I can well understand that it's a bit of a disappointing engine. This has 
torque, this has grunting, builds up speed quite nicely with minimal effort, uh, which in an executive car is rather the point. And I bet the two litre doesn't drink much less, if any less, fuel. Uh, you're better off having torque and not using all of it than having no torque and having to wring the neck of the engine all of the time. But it certainly handles tidily. I'm making good progress along here and it's not feeling like I'm pushing the limit at all. Just uh, comfortably within it. Which again is what you want in a road car. It's all well and good having rear wheel drive for your yeah, power sliding and dabs of oppo but that's not good on the road behavior and uh, this this is good on the road behavior it's been able to drive briskly and securely and uh, it more than matches that requirement beautiful here in new zealand obviously uh, try the brakes no one behind abs and the abs was kicking in there but um decent i would say and again i'm accelerating it's only the rev counter that's really telling me it's changing gear in terms of road noise new zealand does have very noisy road surfaces generally every car i've driven there has been a fair amount of road noise so um, they don't have very much sort of sealed black top um, which tends to give a much quieter ride quality or ride noise rather look at this arrow straight road makes for incredibly boring video footage we can do a wiper test while we go along here though doesn't quite overlap there is a hint of triangle of doom there and uh, is there a mist function no that's just wash oh dear no no mist function that, that's quite nissan to be honest to not have a mist function on the wipers uh, yes yeah, so you have to go down nice feel though they don't click very soft feel to the stalks um, that's the most exciting thing about this car right now So that was the uh, 1996 Nissan Maxima, or Nissan Maxima QX, or Nissan Sephiro. Um, yeah, I really like that. I think that is a car that has been wrongly ignored for decades, just for looking a little bit bland. Try and find one in a nice colour though, because um, yeah, that, that looks absolutely magnificent. I like that a lot. But I shall say, thank you very much for watching this um, New Zealand road test. Uh, don't forget to subscribe before you go. Don't forget you can get to the Hubnut store where you can not buy these t-shirts because they've sold out, but there are other nice things. I'm really good at this. And uh, various support options, Patreon, um, where there will be a fresh um, design available for um, just for people who su take out a, um, the, the right tier for a New Zealand trip t-shirt, which I really must design. Um, but yeah. Thank you for watching. I shall see you in a future video. Farewell. Oh, that's quite annoying. Okay, I'll take the key out. Oh, and you can shut up as well.